heavy 3D printer purges filament at the start of the print. But thanks to Camp, some clipper printers can do it better than others. But can we recreate smart, adaptive purging for any 3D printer just in the slicer? Yes, and today I'll show you how. I'm hoping the contents of this video are easy to follow and will improve pretty much any 3D printer. It relies on some tricks to make our start G-code smarter, but don't worry, everything is on printables and has been made as easy as possible to use. Let's start by answering the basic question, what is a purge line or purge extrusion? Well, it's separate to the actual model that you want to print. If we slice this model and zoom in, we can see the individual extrusions that make it up, but then if we pan to the front of the bed, we can see some additional extrusions color-coded as custom, and these are our purge lines that take place before the print starts. So if they're not part of the print, why do we actually need them? Let's answer that by looking at a very simple version of my second SK tank. And once again, we see this in green in the front left corner of the bed. As the print starts and the nozzle is getting up to temperature, it's common for filament to ooze freely out of the end. This means two things. If it's not removed, it has a chance to get stuck to the model as it starts printing. And it also means the nozzle is not primed with filament. You can always take the chance that any loose bits of filament won't end up stuck in the print or you can run a purge line, which you're seeing in real time here. It's just a controlled extrusion to clean the nozzle and prime it. As you can see, the first layer is now going down perfectly, there's no loose bits contaminating the model, and there's no gaps in the extrusion. Interestingly, if we look at the purge line, we can see there's only filament on the right-hand portion, and this tells us that yes, the nozzle did need priming, and there would have been gaps in the model without this. Another way to prime the nozzle is to have a skirt, a series of extrusions that typically trace around the outside of the object, seen here highlighted in green. But this uses more plastic and time, so I turn this off whenever I can. There's a lot of ways to do a purge line. In fact, my second 3D printing video on YouTube back in 2012 featured modified start G-code to add an anchor, as we called it back then, in the front left corner of the bed, and I've been using variations of this ever since. Most printers are set up to extrude a simple line in the same front corner of the bed on every print. But sometimes you do get some more unusual ones. For instance, this elaborate sequence by the Bamboo Lab X1, where a specific pattern is drawn for the micro LiDAR to examine. But the most novel by far one I've seen is on the Prusa XL, which extrudes in midair before shifting sideways onto the lip of the bed plate, leaving the purge line dangling. The best SART G-code purge that I've come across comes from Clipper Adaptive Meshing Purging, also known as Camp by Kyle Isa. I'm a huge fan of this, but the issue here is it's an add-on for Clipper firmware alone. I think most people shouldn't have any trouble installing it via SSH and then uncommenting the version of the adaptive purge they want, but if you run Marlin firmware or another, obviously you won't be able to use it. So let's see what makes it so good and what non-Clipper folk are missing out on. After installing Camp, you simply add a line at the end of your start G-code called Line Purge, or alternatively Voron Purge, which will produce a little Voron logo. The whole point of camp is that it limits movement to where the print resides on the bed. For instance, for the adaptive meshing, instead of probing the whole bed, if we were printing a benchy, only the area around the benchy will be probed, saving time and improving accuracy. The adaptive purge is also laid down right next to the print instead of always in the same corner. At the end of the purge, there's a quick retraction and then a fast travel move before the nozzle moves over to start the actual print. This seems pretty straightforward, but there's actually a few advantages. Firstly, the purge line isn't in the same place every print. This is only superficial damage, but we can see on the XL that the lettering is being removed by the purge lines going down there. The purge line is also no longer on the edge of the bed. On a curved or warped bed, which is common in 3D printing, if the purge line is in a corner where the bed is higher, the distance between the bed and nozzle could end up being too close. And we can see this exact problem on my CR10 Max, where the purge lines along this edge are all smooshed into the bed, that makes them near impossible to remove, and it's also lifting up the bed surface in that region. Our next benefit is the reduced distance between the purge line and the actual model. If it's a small model in the middle of the bed, there'll be quite a long travel movement to start the print, and with that, a greater chance of ooze and stringing on that journey. But with adaptive meshing like Camp, we have a very short travel distance, and that should give a cleaner result. 
One thing that's not so obvious about Camp's adaptive purge line is that it takes place with the nozzle a little bit higher above the bed than normal. This reduces the chance of it being smushed in if the Z offset isn't right, and it also makes it pretty big and chunky, and that has a small advantage of making it easier to get underneath and flick off. So summing up adaptive purging, we have a series of small benefits that I think make it worthwhile, and in terms of camp there's only one negative, and that's that we can't see our purge line in the print preview of the slicer. It's completely invisible because the command in the start G code runs a clipper macro, and the slicer has no way of knowing what's going to be involved in that. So now we're going to recreate this adaptive purge, but natively in the slicer. It still will work on Clipper, but it will work for Marlin and any other firmware too. To do this, we're going to look at the macro for line purge within camp, and it's quite sophisticated in taking printer variables, calculating things on the fly for the best result. Our version is going to be a lot simpler than this, but will function the same way. The other thing we'll be looking at is the default camp settings, as I found them quite effective. The secret is in modifying the printer start G code, using the variables built into the slicer. And the G code we're about to formulate is compatible with Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, Prusa Slicer, and Super Slicer without any modification. Cura on the other hand is unfortunately incompatible, because even though there's a large range of variables we can access, the ones we need that relate to the model being printed aren't available. I had a previous video on slicer variables, and documentation has improved a lot since then. If we head to our printer profile, switch to machine g-code, and then click the edit button under start g-code. We'll be able to see the start g-code, but then we also have this handy reference down the side. Clicking on any of these variables will then give us a description down the bottom. The category that we want is dimensions. Specifically, the variables for first layer print, min, and max. Let's understand these graphically with an example model. What I've highlighted here in yellow is the boundary of the entire model but these variables instead deal with the boundary of just the first layer. The lower left corner of that box refers to first layer print min, and we have to refer to the x and y values separately, with either a 0 or a 1 in square brackets at the end. The upper right hand corner of the box is referenced with first layer print max, and again we separate x and y with either a 0 or a 1 referenced in square brackets at the end. We're now going to extrude a purge line offset to the left of the first layer footprint. Let's start with the position for the beginning of the purge line. For X, that's going to be first layer print min, minus 10, to offset at 10 millimeters to the left, and for Y we don't need to make any changes. The end point of the purge is going to follow a similar convention. It's still minus 10 for X because it's vertically above it, but now Y is going to be that position, plus 30, because we're moving 30 millimeters upwards. That's the variable explained, but what does the actual G-code sequence look like? What you're seeing here is based on the default camp values, and it's a lot easier to understand once we add some comments. We reset the extruder position, we move to the start of the purge line 0.8mm above the bed, we then extrude 30mm of plastic vertically, reset the extruder, do a quick retract, and then move a further 10mm vertically without extruding to get the nozzle clear of the purge line. We then reset the extruder one more time ready to print. Let's edit the start G code for one of my printers to insert this instead. Most of the time, what you're looking for is the final line that heats up the nozzle ready to start printing. Typically, your old purge sequence will be straight after that. So let's highlight and delete everything after that temperature command and now paste in our new G code. We'll close the dialog boxes, slice the print, and we can see right there in the preview, our new purge line has activated beautifully. And here's the beauty. If we move the object to a new location, the adaptive purge line will move with it. And if we scale the object into a true abomination, once again, the purge line will change to suit. As the name suggests, the purge adapts to suit each individual print. For a clipper printer, you may get an error that your move exceeds the maximum extrusion. So just like with camp, you'll need to raise this value to something like 2.5 and then save and restart the firmware. So let's see this in action. The first printer is a second SK tank running clipper as we can see, the purge line goes to the left of the model and does a good job of dislodging a blob too. CR10 Max with a large nozzle, also running Clipper, and as we can see, no problems there either. Ender 3 running Marlin with Octoprint, and again, this works quite well. I did also test this G-code on a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and it worked just fine, but you might notice the original purge line there at the front of the bed, because for the first run I just stacked it onto the end. I then did a second run where I deleted the start G code labeled extrude Cali test, 
Strangely enough, there was still a section at the front of the bed in the preview, but when I printed it, it did come out as expected. So on every printer and firmware I tested, this worked flawlessly. We've got a nice chunky purge line, just like that created from the native camp plugin. Let's finish off with some customization. The first thing to know is that I've provided some different examples of this that position the purge line in different places relative to the actual model. So let's look at how to change some other things within the code. Firstly, let's say we want the purge line further away from the actual model. Look for the value that's plus or minus 10 and then make it bigger or smaller to taste. What about if the purge extrusion flow rate is too much for your hot end to keep up with? Fixing this is just a matter of lowering the feed rate on the second G1 line. And finally, a likely change will be to the retraction. You can simply change the length and speed to suit what you normally have. Or if you're running firmware retraction, just change that whole line to be G10. You can of course create more elaborate purge patterns like the Camp 4 on logo. It's just a matter of mapping out the individual moves followed by a G92E0 to reset the extruder after each. This example you're seeing here is an equilateral triangle. It worked perfectly so I've included it in the examples. Everything has been carefully documented on a printables page, so please check it out and share if you think it's useful. And I have borrowed heavily from Camp, so thank you again to Kyle Isa for their wonderful work. Let me know if you're going to give this a try. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.